Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Love Reigns, and we are back for another live edition of the Random Thoughts of Rain podcast during the MPN Network Night. I think this is like number seven that we've done, six or seven for the live. Six. Number six, man. So six it's been months. really yep. six months, man. So we do the MPN Network Night every last Thursday of the month. So we appreciate y'all for tuning in. Uh, not just to the Random Thoughts of Rain, but the whole crew, the whole family of the NPN Network. Um, so today, uh oh, boom! <laughs> <laughs> today, <laughs> today, uh, I'm truly honored to be joined by the one, the only Miss Alicia Lockley. What's up? Hey, welcome to the studio. Thank you. The stew, as we call it. I love this. You like the, you like it? Like this whole yeah. evening already. I've just Mr. been having Alfie. conversations and just y'all are just so it's nice. It's a vibe, it's right? It is. This is what yeah. we do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we do. So I know who you are and I know how amazing you are. Bye, Ring Ring. Bye. <laughs> I know how amazing you are, but for the people who may not know who you are, tell them who you are okay. and tell them why you're dope. Okay. Oh. Okay. Yeah. No pressure. <laughs> um, no pressure. <laughs> So my name is Alicia Simone Lockley. I stuck in the middle name there. Um, I'm a poet, tea enthusiast, Sagittarius, dangerous dreamer, author, TEDx speaker, ellipses, dot, 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 dot. I like that. Dangerous dreamer. Yes. Okay, okay. So let's start from the beginning. Mm -hmm. How did you, how did all of that come into, you know, come to be? Was that something that, that started at childhood? Like, were you always into poetry and performing and things like that? I was. I was always a performer, like, within my my household. Mm -hmm. You know, on the outside, I was a bit introverted, and I was always kind of shy. But (laughs) my grandmama used to tell me, my grandmama and my auntie used to tell me all the time, when I was at my grandmama's house, she had this uh, brown and black step stool, and I used to drag it in the middle of the floor. And then I would grab one of her towels and put it on my head so I could have some inches. And then, yes, and then I would stand up and I would prepare myself, you know, and get all cute and dignified. And I would say, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, caddies and doggies, Barney and friends, amen. And then I would take my little bow and then I would step off the stool. And yeah, so it, it's been there since day one. I love it. Please tell me <laughs> that somebody has that on video. I wish. Oh, so. man, that would be dope. I'm pretty sure somebody has a picture, like a Polaroid or something. Yeah. yeah. Okay, inches. Inches, Did my towel say? inches, my yeah. beach towel inches, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. So, okay, your very first time performing mm-hmm. live in front of a group of strangers outside of the, the caddies and the doggies and the barnies Caddies and, and doggies. <laughs> Ooh. Probably, well, I don't know if they would be strangers because, well, they were to me because I was young, too young to really know who they were until mm-hmm. I grew up with them, but I would say church. Okay. Um, that's that's where I got my start yeah. in churches. And, you know, whenever, you know, my mom and my dad were heavily involved in church. My daddy is a bishop and my mom sings. So I have this ongoing joke. She's a visual artist mm-hmm. that sings and my daddy is a, a writing preacher. So the two of them had me and I'm a poet that has imagery in my work. Gotcha. Um, so whenever they had to go preach somewhere else, I would go with them Mm -hmm. and I would either have to sing or I would have to do a little speech or some little introduction or something. Um, But that was my introduction to, to, to that world and being shy was not an option. Yeah. Yeah. Even though I was. (laughs) (laughs) So I can imagine when you first performed, you know, as an adult in front of strangers, Mm -hmm. it probably was an easier yeah, kind of it was a bit of a transition because it was a gradual transition, I'll say, mm-hmm. because um, even though I started out, you know, in the church, when I started branching out and writing my own work, it was still very churchy work. Gotcha. Um, so my first time actually being, you know, away from the churchy crowd and everything was at the Ritz Theater with Chef. Yeah. Alan. Oh, and, chef. Yeah. Hey, chef. Hey. Um, <laughs> you know, and that's where I met Cuban, and that's where I met you, yeah. and that's where, you know, I started hanging out with Charnese, you know, my friend. Um, so, yeah, that's where that's where it all began, and yeah. That's what's up. That's what's up. So, what, out of all of the experiences that you've had mm-hmm. thus far, what's one of the most memorable experiences that you've Ooh. had? One of the most memorable ones. 
I feel like I just did ASMR right there. Like, <laughs> um, it's a toss up between the TED talk that I did a few years ago and getting to perform uh, for Dorothy, Dorothy Pittman Hughes mm. at UNF. Yeah, that yeah. was a game changer for me. Yeah. You know, um, just being in front of somebody who is so influential and somebody who is historic. And I got to share the same room with her. And then I got to hug her yeah. afterwards and then take my picture with the fist in the air and all of that. That was cool. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. That was cool. Yeah, she's she's really, it's, uh, I had the honor of being in the, uh, going to like a, I didn't perform, but I was mm-hmm. at a party or something and she was there. And it was really cool to, to just be in her presence. Yeah. It's just like. There's a mother aura about her. Yeah. yeah. She's she's quiet. She doesn't say too much. But I mean when she speaks, you listen. Right. You know, she has that type of energy about her. Yeah. That's yeah. what's up. That's mm-hmm. what's up. So okay. You know, now that the world is starting to even though the pandemic is not over. No. Mm-hmm. We acting like it is, but it really yeah. ain't. It's yeah. not over by far. Mm-mm. Right. Um but when the pandemic hit, there was a lot of artists, a lot of a lot of creatives especially mm-hmm. Who just shut down, yeah. right? So how how were you able to continue, you know, pushing through with everything, you know, not being able to perform, not being able to go to open mics, not being able to go to events, mm-hmm. everything being virtual? What was it that kept you going? I had a lot to say. Um, the tail end of 2019 into the beginning of 2020 was a whirlwind for me. Um, there was a yeah, a yeah. bunch of life events happened for me. And so I just started writing and writing and writing and writing. And at first, I, what I started was actually a treatment for like a visual version of my book that's already out. Mm-hmm. It's called The Book of Hymns. Um, and it's on Amazon, shameless plug. <laughs> uh, I w- get that. Yes. I, was, <laughs> I, I thought I was working on the treatment for that. And what I actually ended up doing was a whole different project. All of that got scrapped. It was like God said, Mm-mm, you're doing this instead. You're gonna talk about this pain and all of this stuff that you've been going through through the tail end of 2019 and the top of 2020. And I ended up releasing this project called The Blue Period, which was my visual chat book. It was kind of like my lemonade. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a 20, 20 to 30 minute long poetry chat book of all of these poems that are stitched together where I address um, what it's like to go through PTSD, what it's like to struggle with depression and grief, because all of us as a collective were grieving something. And so I wanted to release something that was soothing, um, something that made us look at ourselves and really be honest with our own feelings and just to have a collective moment of vulnerability, because I felt like that's what we needed at that moment. Yeah, Yeah. So that came out in September of yeah, already almost a year ago. Jesus. <laughs> Time. Yeah, yeah, so that came out September 27th of last year. That's what's up. Mm-hmm. Congrats, congrats on Thank that. You. So your very first book. Yeah. When you released that, how what did that feel like? Like Ooh. once it was done and it was out there in the world, like what was that feeling like? It felt like somebody was walking in on me undressing, and I'm going to tell you why. Yeah. Like I was happy and I went through some stuff to get that book out it was very it it stripped a lot of pretense and a lot of you know of old beliefs off of me um it's called the book of hymns and it's like a play on you know gospel hymns and like him like hymns men um and so in that book I explored you know a lot of the things that I had been taught and the things that were no longer serving me and patterns that I I fell into um and, and just you know exploring family trauma and all of that stuff so it it stripped a lot off of me so when unf ended up posting my book release i was really excited but then after i went home i said oh snap people just bought copies of my diary what did i just do (laughs) like oh it's out there now i was like that was and you know i was scared because i I knew that people who went to my church and people who I grew up with were going to get copies of this book and they were going to, you know, see things that they're not used to seeing from me. Like I said, most of my poems were very churchy in the, in the beginning. Um, it was a lot of me trying to prove how holy I was or prove my anointing outside of that space. Gotcha. And so now, you know, with this book being out, you know, people were seeing a different side of me, a side that was human, a side that was messy, a side that was ugly, a side that was sexy, a side that was grown up. Mm-hmm. And I, I was nervous for all of that. But once it came out, I was 
Yeah. 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 So when you talk, okay, so as far as like that transition, right, mm-hmm. going from, um, you know, changing your belief system mm-hmm. and addressing that and not yeah. only addressing that, but doing it publicly. Yeah. How was that? Because I know a lot of times, especially when you have, you know, uh, when you're surrounded by family members who mm-hmm. are in the church still, like how did they, res- how was that response? <laughs> They were the main ones who bought the book first, and then they would call my mama, and they were like, ooh, where she learned to cuss like that? She never (laughs) does that. You know, and and it's not like every other page I'm dropping F-bombs or anything like that. It's just, it was just a a different side that they weren't used to seeing, and I was scared, but it was very freeing because I was like, oh, finally, the, the real side of me gets to come out. It was like taking a broth at the end of the day. It's like, finally. <laughs> um, like, it's out now. It, it's, it's out in the open. It's there. Uh, you know, and we had conversations. It was very therapeutic. My mom. Hi, mom, if you're watching. Hey, she, mom. This might be her bedtime. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like, my mom, whenever I was, when I was writing the book, I would talk to her a lot. Yeah. And there was a lot of a lot of tears shed a lot of stuff that she didn't know about a lot of things and, and when we would sit together sometimes she would read you know a few pages out of the manuscript before it came out and she said I didn't know this pain ran this deep for you I didn't know that this church hurt for you ran this deeply like yeah you talk about it in different ways and yeah I know you you've expressed yourself at home but I didn't know it was this deep and that let me know that I did my job because at a certain point, especially PKs or preacher's kids, Mm -hmm. um, we have to be honest with ourselves and we have to just, you know, remember that the people surrounding you love you. And if they like for real, for real love you, they'll love your honesty as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I had to come to terms with that. I'm still coming to terms with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of strength in it. There's a lot of strength in vulnerability. There is. Yeah. yeah. It really, it really is. And I think it's it's such a freeing. Like, the fact that you were able to talk to your mom about it. Because, mm-hmm. like, when I wrote my book, I I didn't consult or tell anybody. I just put it out there. And it was yeah. just like, oh, crap. Like, oh, I forgot there was See, this one poem that's in there about this thing. It's like, oh. Yeah. See, that's ideal. Yeah. <laughs> that That is the ideal situation. <laughs> but I think what I wanted to do was, like, rip the Band-Aid off for, like, slowly. Because I knew, I was like, okay, well, let me just show her this poem first before anybody else sees it so that way I can get this awkward conversation out of the way. But that did, that did not stop the yeah. awkward conversations. They still happen. Yeah. They still happen. That probably would have been better. I, I probably should have done it that way because, yeah, the way I just do, I just kind of just put it out there. Like, yeah. This is what it is. This is what it is. Now the world knows. No, you know you're welcome (laughs) yeah (laughs) you know i guess like my 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 way of my 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 thought process in that Mm -hmm. is not to embarrass anybody right but it's like it's to to talk about and to show you know these are the things that i've experienced Mm -hmm. maybe there's someone else out there who has experienced something similar yeah and now they can look at me and say oh this person went through this thing Right. And they look at them mm-hmm. out here thriving and smiling and still living. You yeah. know what I mean? So it was just, it was never, you know, meant to embarrass or do anything like that. It was just meant to just put it out there and just show like, hey, I'm still standing. Yeah. 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 I feel like there's an expectation. Well, one of my favorite poets is uh, Jericho Brown. And I, I get to take a, a class with him in the summer. I was so excited. Oh, yes. I, I love him. I've, he's, he's just really good. He's a classic wordsmith. Um, he did a podcast uh, on this show called On Being. Mm-hmm. And he was saying how he doesn't show his poems to his mom because as a poet, you're expected to have those difficult conversations that nobody wants to have. And as a result, a lot of people like to stay away from you or avoid you because they know that low-key we're reading them and we're about to say the stuff that she was going to say. And so with that in mind, it's like it's embarrassing your family or trying to disown them or trying to like read them for filth in your poetry is never the goal. It's just that as a poet, you do have poetic license to talk about those things Mm -hmm. that hurt you in a way that'll heal you and that's not like just dumping all of your grievances out to the world but it's just i mean there's a certain level of vulnerability that's required of you 
if you're going to be a poet, a real one. And least. it's necessary. It is. And I think, I think too, the, the thing about the pandemic that I love is that it kind of really just opened up the floodgates. Like, it really mm-hmm. just gave us, like, carte blanche of just being able to be vulnerable and just be like, yeah, we got to talk about it. Because yeah. what, what we realize with everything, not just that everything that has happened personally mm-hmm. with everybody individually, but with the stuff that's been happening in the world. Yeah. Like, the Band-Aid has been ripped off. The mask have been removed. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, this is, we got to talk about this stuff. Yeah. We can't, we can no longer skirt around it. We can no longer, mm-hmm. you know, give bits and pieces. Like, no, we got to deal with it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's just like. Full out. You might as well. You yeah. know what I mean? It's out there now. Like, yeah. what can, what you going to do? Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it, there doesn't leave much room for imposter syndrome <laughs> these days, too. It's like, nowadays, you just have to know. Yeah. You gotcha. gotta know. We've had all of this time in quarantine to, you know, really reflect on our choices and reflect on who we've been to other people and who we've been to ourselves. Absolutely. And at a certain point, you kind of just have to own up to your own stuff and gotcha. and walk into the room, believe that you belong there. Yep. Um, your yes, story, you cause yep. it, yeah, mm-hmm. and, and and know that your stories are valid and they deserve to be heard and, and all of that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, what's one of the 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 lessons that you learned about yourself? During quarantine, I need to mind my business. Mm. I heard a lot of people say it, say it <laughs> for the people in the back <laughs> that I need to mind my business, and I'm gonna tell you why in what way I mean. Um, sometimes we create competitions in our heads that don't exist. Sometimes we'll be in competition with people who aren't even thinking about us during the yeah, pandemic. Yes. Ain't nobody thinking about nobody else. We're trying to survive this whole thing as a collective, mm-hmm. um, and so I feel like learning how to have tunnel vision and focus on ourselves and and how to you know mind your own business mind your own craft before you're looking at somebody else's success or how somebody else went viral was essential in that moment because for me I'll say personally I had to to ask myself okay Alicia do you want to be the best version of you that you possibly can be or do you want to be stuck being the best version of somebody else and even if it does work out and you get somebody else's success, you aren't going to be happy because it's still their success and not yours. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I had to learn how to mind my business, walk into my own anointing, know where I was anointed, where I was supposed to stay. Yeah, stay in your lane. Stay in my lane. <laughs> yeah. Learn how to mind my business and just flourish where I was supposed to flourish. Yeah, yeah. That's the whole way. Yeah. Really is. That'll preach. Yes, that mean right. I got that from my daddy. Listen, <laughs> you, you better preach because that is—it's a whole word. I mean, but it's true. You know, we mm-hmm. have to—you, we, you—you're not meant to be good at everything. You're you know not what I'm saying like stay in your lane. Do be good at what you're good at. A doer of all is a master of none. Fact. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And that's be the difference good. between being multi-talented too. I mean, right. you can be multi-talented and still, you know. Right. flourishing where you're supposed to go but yeah stay focused you, can't you can't do everything you know yeah yeah no Just no stay in your lane mm-hmm. man. stay in your own lane <laughs> so did, did the uh the quarantine birth any new creative endeavors or anything yeah i think i learned how to be my own producer or beginning producer um because studios studios were closed mm-hmm. I had to figure out how to record my own voiceovers and how to layer and stack my own vocals for Blue Period. Mm-hmm. You know, if you ever, like, if anybody ever gets a chance to watch it, you might see my name multiple times in those credits yeah. because I had to, I was in my closet almost every day recording vocals and, you know, recording vocal voiceovers and recording poems and figuring out how, you know, to make the sound sound clean and how to make it crisp and make sure there was no rub or, or any of that. So, you know, I definitely learned how to work for myself in that regard. Um, And there was something else that happened. During quarantine, I watched uh, Michaela Cole's show that came out, I May Destroy You. I love her, too. She's so amazing. She's brilliant. Her, I, without saying too much, but still getting deep and being vulnerable, um, the tail end of 2019, I went through a traumatic experience. That's all I'm going to say. And... I saw the promo material for her show and I kept, you know, pushing it off and and not wanting to see it because I said, I don't know if I'm ready for this. This is too soon. I don't know if I'm ready to call the thing that I went through 
the thing. The thing. Right. Um, and and so like eventually I sat down and I watched the show and I said, yeah, I'm supposed to be doing something like this yeah. right now. And that's how Blue Period came out in yeah in September. Okay. Yeah. That's such a testimony to me because it's just like you think about you know like had she if if you didn't come across that mm -hmm. right maybe Blue Period wouldn't have happened. You know what I mean? Maybe it would have come in a different way, but you know it's mm -hmm. it's it's important, right? I was talking to the idea of yesterday, and I was like, it's important for us to keep writing. It is, and to keep putting things out there, even even when we have those hard times, mm -hmm. like because there's there's people who are waiting for us. There are, you know, and and people who are counting on us to 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 produce things and to show them that. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Like I went through something similar, mm -hmm. and I'm okay. You know, yeah. like not saying that you know we we all walk the same path, but no. If I can get through it, you can get through it too. Right. You know. What I There's mean? a so, reason why they say we're overcome by the word of our testimony. This is gonna be the churchiest podcast y'all ever did. <laughs> all these scriptures. You <laughs> it's necessary. Listen, it is drop necessary. Drop that word. Drop that word. Yeah. There, there's a reason why that's there, and you know, it's true. It's true. When we're open about, you know, our own wounds and we're open about, you know, just our own our own shortcomings and the things that we we feel like we may have messed up on, I feel like that's when we're that's real ministry. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, but it's necessary because it's like we're human. Mm -hmm. You know, we're gonna mess up and yeah. we're gonna go through things. Like nobody is going to have the perfect life, whether you're a mm -hmm. PK, whether you're a preacher, whether you're a bishop, True. it doesn't matter. We're all going to go through something. That's We're going to go through some kind of test, mm -hmm. and those tests will then produce testimonies. That's true. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we have to. We have to go through it. And it's just, I think, a lot. What, what I've learned from the pandemic is just that, you know, everybody is going through something. Right. None of us are exempt. Mm -hmm. None get, of us are. None of us are exempt. We don't get to skip over like we experiences. don't. We don't get to no. skip over it. Okay, mm -hmm. so now it's okay. How do you approach it? Mm -hmm. How do you handle it? You either stay in the same in the same path or stay on the same path and keep going through the same thing over and over mm -hmm. again, which is the definition of insanity. Yep. Or you step outside of that and just be like, okay, mm -hmm. let me pause for a minute. Yeah. Take a breather. And then we approach it yeah. in a different way. In a different way. You know, and I can talk about my my pain. Like, was it Kevin Hart had or Laugh at my, my Pain? pain. That's so, that was a brilliant special. It was you, brilliant. People can say what they want to about him as a comedian, but the way that he marketed that and the way that it came out, like, mm -hmm. people were literally laughing at his pain. And it wasn't like a way of, oh, I shouldn't be laughing at this. But it, I feel like that was a therapeutic project for him. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because I mean, if, I, if, I can laugh, if I can laugh at my own pain. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. What I'm saying like it's okay. Like I'm laughing at it, so you can laugh at it mm -hmm. like, because I'm cool. I'm standing still, and I'm laughing first, and I'm laughing right. So you can't laugh at me. That and, you, mm -hmm. and then and that also takes away the power. Yep, that takes away the power from people being able to use your vulnerabilities against you. True, because you've owned it. Yep, you've owned it. I've owned every flaw that I have. Yeah, so you can't use any of that against mm -hmm. me. You know what I mean? Because I'm I'm no. almost there. I'm learning. I'm I'm learning. I own it. Yeah. Like this is what it is. Yeah. Like, MJ MJ is one of my best friends. Yeah. You know, this is this who I am. Yeah. Like, and I get cussed out on a regular. <laughs> she like she's talking about you. <laughs> but it's like, but see, you need people like that who who are willing to be graceful with you. Well, who are willing to extend grace to you because they know how human you are. Um, I feel like. You just need that that environment to foster that that human condition within. Yeah, yeah. I feel yes. like I'm citing my TED talk all over again. But basically, <laughs> it basically said the same thing. It's yeah. like as human beings, we are little mini sanctuaries for other people, and when we get around the right people who who won't take advantage of that safe place, it's beautiful. It is. Yeah, and it, it, it you can be honest. Be. You can be human. You can be jacked up and all of that. I'm just mm -hmm. jacked up and flawed as I am. Mm -hmm. This is hey, this is who I am. Yep. Right. And it doesn't mean that you know if you're if you're an asshole, it doesn't mean like oh okay you just have the right to just no. be an asshole all the time. Like okay. No. <laughs> but part of that is that you have friends that are going to be honest enough with you right. to call you out on it too. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 
So, so what's coming up? What can people look forward to from the Alicia Lockett? Well, um, I'm working on slowly writing my second book. I can't say the name of it quite yet. <laughs> um, but I've I lost my grandmother at the top of 2020, and I've been writing a lot of poems about her. And I realized that much of my poetic experience and my poetic career I owe to her. Um, because I mean, she taught me how to cook most of the foods that I know how to cook. She taught me how to sew. My mom is a seamstress too. And she taught me too. Um, I used to go to Quincy, which is this beautiful city near Tallahassee. Mm -hmm. And what, like most of my poetic experiences and the language that I use, they like to call it a magnolia mouth in the South. If you're a poet, um, I got that from spending a lot of time with her. So I might be doing something with that soon. Ooh. So yes, it's going to be a Southern Belle romantic, like with a little sprinkle of Zora Neale Hurston I'm sensibility. I'm already picturing you performing it. That's yeah. Listen, I'm mm -hmm. already, what? Oh, yeah. Like that Zora Neale Hurston feel, like, yeah. Oh, uh, that's going to be dope. Okay, okay. Yeah. So how can people get, get in contact, keep up with you, follow you, all that good stuff? Yes, so I am on Instagram at Miss Lockley. It's M S dot L O C K L E Y. I'm on Twitter, Alicia Lockley. I'm on YouTube, Alicia Lockley. I'm on Facebook, Alicia Lockley. Uh, did I miss anything? I'm on Pinterest, Alicia Lockley. And if you Google me, Alicia, Alicia Lockley. Lockley. Yeah. <laughs> That's what's up. Yeah. That's what's up. So one of the other reasons I do this podcast is because I, I like to, uh, I've challenged myself to, to be more intentional about yeah. giving people their flowers. Aww. So I want to give you your flowers, Aww. your virtual flowers, Thank as you. they were. Here we go. Oh, they smell lovely. <laughs> I'm gonna There's some flowers. Here. I'm going to try to keep them alive when I go home. Yep. There you go. <laughs> Make sure you water them twice a day. I will. Um, but yeah, I want to give you your flowers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you Aww. for your for your art for your talent for everything that you are everything that is alicia lockley please keep going please don't stop thank you, you know no matter what um because i see you and i appreciate you thank you so much thank you Yay. <laughs> so i appreciate you and uh yeah we, we'll, we'll definitely uh We'll chat soon. And we yeah. got to work together this we did. past weekend. And yeah, that Mocha. Was, that was, that really was cool. a good show. I haven't felt that good on stage in a long yeah. time. Yeah, you that were was, amazing. Thank you. You were way. too. You were too. I had much more energy. Thank you. Because we did that. You, you like, have a... You that have a, whole piece I saw come to life. Right. Was, I was like, girl, Thank what? you. That was awesome. You see, MJ, even she was, she knew Thank you. It was dope, man. So for those of y'all that don't know, um, myself and Alicia mm -hmm. and uh, Tiffany Melanson and Yvette Angelique. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, there was one more. Had, no. Heather? Hadley. Hadley. Something. Hadley. She's a painter. I can see her face, too. Yep. Yeah. Her. We got to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we, um, were, we had the opportunity to collaborate with the Bold City uh, contemporary mm -hmm. ensemble um, and write response pieces to the Romancing the Mirror exhibit at the uh, the Museum of Contemporary yeah. Art downtown. Kind of like so. an ekphrastic poetry experience. Yeah, yeah, it was truly awesome. And they had like stations set up mm -hmm. in, for each of us in front of the pieces that we wrote about. Yep. And we performed with the ensemble and it was just, it was a truly, truly dope experience. It was good. So shouts out to Mocha, shouts out to, uh, to Voya, and the Bold City uh, Contemporary Ensemble. So go check out the exhibit if you mm -hmm. haven't. Excuse me. Um, also at the Comer, the Zanelli Mohali mm. exhibit is still going on. Mm -hmm. um, and that's an, an amazing exhibit as well. So thank y'all so much for tuning in to the Random Thoughts of Rain podcast. Uh, make sure you follow Random Thoughts of Rain, hashtag Random Thoughts of Rain. Follow I Am Love Rains. Go to the website, IamLoveRains.live. You know, I'm doing all kinds of stuff, so just follow me. <laughs> it's just I can't keep up with myself, so just follow me, and then if, if you want to know where I'm at, you know where I'm at, right? Shouts out to the MPN Network, the whole MPN Network family. Make sure you follow Mr. Peterson's <laughs> Neighborhood, Twitter, Twitch, not on Tumblr, 
<laughs> not on Tumblr. Not on Tumblr. Not on Tumblr. Not on Tumblr. All that good stuff. TikTok. All of that, right? And uh, yeah, stay tuned. We appreciate y'all. Peace. Did you get my TikTok?